You're listening to Tactical Startup, a podcast dedicated to building amazing businesses. I'm your host, Taylor Darcy. In this podcast, we explore ways to innovate, improve, and level up your business through sales, marketing, automation, and business planning. Successful businesses pivot when times are bad and stay the course when times are good. We will have guests from different walks of life to help you see that success is not only possible, but even probable, no matter when or where you start. Through hard work and strategic planning, you can have the entrepreneurial life you've always dreamed. Tune in weekly to level up your business. Hello, welcome. Thank you for tuning in to Tactical Startup. This week, I want to talk to you about complacency and how it is the true enemy of all entrepreneurs and business. The reason, if you look at the most I shouldn't say most. If you look at some of the largest snafus in business history, it all comes back to that complacency. Complacency is the enemy of all great businesses. And if you think about it, and as we talk about these things, you'll realize that complacency is the enemy of your success in all that you do, not just in business, whether it be personal or familial relations, whatever it may be, complacency is the real enemy. Keeping the status quo when the status quo is incorrect or worse, if the status quo doesn't fit purpose anymore. For instance, if you're thinking about business, Blockbuster passed on Netflix. They were laughed out of the room when they were looked to be bought. When Netflix approached, approached Blockbuster and they said no. Now Netflix is thriving and Blockbuster is out of business. All because they thought that the mail-in service, they, they came too little too late. That's, that's really what it came down to. The same thing goes for smartphones. Apple didn't even have a smartphone until not too long ago. And... The Steve Jobs came out with the iPhone. BlackBerry or RIM had the BlackBerry and they were doing amazing. They had no reason to believe that they would be unseated as the king of smartphones, of smart devices. And then the iPhone came out. And at first, the iPhone actually was not all that good. It had some really cool features and innovations, but the, the BlackBerry had a lot more features and was quite good at what it did. And it was mainly meant as a smart device for business executives with the keyboard and just so many features that the BlackBerry had that the iPhone did not have at that time. BlackBerry Messenger was a phenomenal feature for team uh, meetings. It was truly an innovative uh, device. The problem was a couple of things. RIM decided that it did not want to get into the touch game that iPhone had done until it was too late. Years went by of the iPhone innovating, catching up to BlackBerry and passing BlackBerry before they decided to start getting into it. And by then, it was too little too late. Rem thought they had the market. They had the market share. They had the momentum. But they got complacent in what they did. If you look at most good relationships, people need to continually evolve, improve, get better, be more caring. And, and, and I say that in the context of business relationships as well. If you're not caring for your relationships... In business, somebody else is. Somebody else is wooing your clients, your customers, your potential clients, your potential customers. And, and I use that. I mean, think about this. RIM had no stores. They only were in a mall, not even malls. They were only, you could only get them from your carriers. Apple came around and started saying, hey, come check out our devices at the stores, and we're not even going to pressure you to buy. Our product speaks for itself. We don't need you to buy. If you want to buy, great. But we don't need you to buy. We aren't going to give you crappy subsidies. 
that lock you into a contract in order to get you to buy this phone. Now, the carrier still did, but that's not the same thing as the company that manufactures this phone. And things have changed since then, okay? So, I mean, used to you had to pay flat out all cash for your phone. Now you can pay monthly because that's what the public was demanding given the price of the device. The Apple knew that they could charge more for a device if you didn't have to come up with the money all at once. Now, you may still choose to do that, but that was part of their innovation was they moved forward with, rather than expecting you to come up with $1,000, $1,500 for a phone out of pocket, they made it so that you could tack it onto your monthly bill. They even came out with a credit card. Apple is continuing to innovate. Now, are they innovating at the same pace as they were under Steve Jobs? And the answer is no, they're not. Not exactly, not specifically. But they are continuing to innovate. They came out with the Apple Watch. They've come out with AirPods. They've come out with various devices. And I'm not using them as the as what you that you have to use them for, right? It, the, the idea being avoiding complacency. What works yesterday may not work today. If you're going to excel as a business owner, you need to work on avoiding that type of complacency that Blockbuster was in, that RIM was in, that a lot of companies that are now out of business because they failed to not only adapt, but also innovate. They thought what worked will continue to work. And again, this is true regardless of the relationship. This is true regardless of whether it's business or your person. And a lot, a lot of this comes back to where do you spend your time? Is it, in fact, the legal field is ripe for disruption. And that's one of the reasons why I'm doing what I'm doing with the podcast, as well as through YouTube lives, is because so long there was a disconnect between the people that needed legal services and the attorneys that delivered them. And honestly, I felt like this is between the podcast and the videos, that this was a great way to help more of the masses because you can go on YouTube and watch my videos for free. And you can listen to this podcast for free. You can get help with your business for free. I, and I'm not some guru that, yes, may have millions of followers. I've gone to school. I'm, I'm in the trenches right there with you, working on innovating, working on improving, working on squeezing every nickel out of my marketing, as I'm sure you are too. And that's what you have to, to continue to do. Complacency is the enemy, not your competitor. It, it, they might be a competitor, but think of it this way. If you had to pick between two companies, and we'll just use the Apple and RIM example, one that is continuing to innovate and continuing to prove, even though at first Apple was well behind RIM, they sucked. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I didn't move to an iPhone for years because although it was cool and it was Apple, they didn't have the right carrier. They didn't have maps. They didn't have so many of these features that Android and Google had on their smart devices or that RIM had with the BlackBerry. But I'll never forget, I was in the middle of Las Vegas many years ago, and I had a assignment due for one of the classes I was taking. And I had forgotten all about it. And I was so screwed. I was like, dang it. And I'll never forget this. I was in the middle of Las Vegas and I pulled out my phone, uh, an HTC Android. And I was standing in the middle of Las Vegas and, and I'd previous to this, I had tried to use the browser on the BlackBerry in order to log into my class to do the thing that I needed to do. And I could not do it. The browser for BlackBerry was just absolutely junk. The BlackBerry had a lot of great features to it. And this is not a dig on BlackBerry, but it would not allow me to do the browser. And that was the only way I could do it. This had happened to me previously where I needed to get logged in, but I had to get to my computer and I was, you know, living a fairly mobile lifestyle at the time. And I pulled out my HTC. I don't even remember the name of it at this point. And I was able to log in to the website that I needed to. And I was able to post my response and I was done 
all in the middle of Las Vegas, something that BlackBerry had not and could not do. And I found the same thing with Apple when I moved to Apple. They were able to do things that Android and BlackBerry were not able to do. It was a much smoother experience. Now, again, this is not about me being a, a fanboy of Apple or anti-Android or anti-BlackBerry. I loved those devices when I had them. They were great devices. They had a lot of great features. The problem was they got lazy. They started to be complacent with what they did. And when you, as a business owner, stop innovating, start stop improving, that is when you are going to fail. It isn't... If you continue to improve, like right now with the pandemic going on, if you think about it, the businesses that are in business and are staying in business are the ones are finding a way to make it work. Is it easy? No, it's not. But they're making it work. They're using masks. They're using uh, different techniques to improve social distancing. They're going virtual. They're using uh, Zoom meetings instead of in-person meetings. They're using text messaging and phone calls. They're using video. They're using all of these different things that we've had for years, but that we chose to kind of use when we felt like it, not because it was probably the best at the time. And, and I'll be frank with you. I teach a, an online course for business law. And it is not the same experience as being up front in front of a classroom, getting the biofeedback because people don't turn on their cameras. Or if they do turn on the cameras, they're surfing the web. And you can tell because the screen is flashing in their eyes on their glasses and you can tell it's not you or it's not the thing that you're doing. Or you ask a question and nobody, you, you know, you go silent to wait for them to answer it and it's crickets. So it is not the same experience and it's harder to teach online. I, I'm not going to debate it. And so I'm a, and I've, t I've learned online and it is harder to learn online, but it's that commitment to developing. And when we get out of this pandemic, when there is no longer uh, COVID-19 that's, that's we're fighting against, then are we going to let the innovations that we enjoyed or that we tried that we did during the pandemic going to fall by the wayside? Are we going to go back to the, quote unquote, way that we used to do things, even if they aren't good. So I think that the opportunity here is that we need to focus on what works. I mean, like really works and then move forward onto the next thing that works and to the next thing, because that's how you innovate. That's how you get more business is through innovation. Things that weren't possible six months ago are now possible, even five years ago. So I would encourage you that as you're learning your business, as you're starting your business, as you're intentional about your business, that you remember that complacency is what will end your business faster than any other thing. Complacency with the status quo will cause more failure because it shows a lack of care. The only easy day was yesterday. You got to keep pushing forward. You got to keep evolving. You got to keep pushing. And if you've been a business owner for any period of time, you know it's tiring. It's exhausting. But you can do it because helping others and working for yourself is a much better position to be in. Getting to make your own hours. It's flexible, but it you, you, know, you still have to put in the time. You can't do this, you know, nine to five, uh, and I mean, yes, you can do this nine to five, but you can't do it, you know, three hours a day and expect to get a nine to five amount of work. Right? I mean, you can always be doing something. And I'm not suggesting that you should work 18 hour days all the time. Some days that may be what it takes. I know some days I do 18, 19, 20 hours. It depends on what's going on. It depends on what's needed in the business. Sometimes you don't get to be around for that holiday. Sometimes you miss things because it's got to be done and you have to do it. There's nothing wrong with that occasionally, but you have to put in the work. You have to put in the time and you have to put in the effort that it takes in order to be successful. And that means constantly every day reevaluating whether what you're doing is improving. 
or or if it's not stop doing the things that aren't working and start doing the things that are and sometimes you don't know what that is for a little while give it some time let it marinate you know you don't necessarily know uh that something will work the first minute you do it it takes time google for instance if you're doing planning on doing seo for your business search engine optimization Google doesn't start picking up your website, the things that you do on your website, because there's so much traffic. I mean, it's literally millions of terabytes, uh, gigabytes. I mean, just there's an insane amount of, of web traffic throughout the world every day. And Google being the predominant uh, search engine, it takes it time to figure out that you even exist. And one of the ways that they figure this out is by having proper backlinks to the business, to your business. And so by having directories, it scans these directories for new businesses via these backlinks. Now, that's just a very high level look of, of SEO. But the idea being is that whatever you do today is going to pay dividends in a week from now or six months from now or a year to net from now. But if you don't do it today, it can't pay dividends tomorrow. If you procrastinate it, if you don't innovate, if you would, you know, if you do the same thing you've always done, you're going to get the thing you've always gotten. And, and so the innovation moving forward, continuing every day, think about compound interest, right? Each day you put a penny into a bank, uh, is going to give you money saved. You know, the old phrase, the old saying, uh, a penny saved is a penny earned is, is great, is amazing. But more to the point, it's about what you're doing, the action that you're doing each day. Are you moving forward with your business? Or are you resting on yesterday's success? If you are resting on yesterday's success, you will go out of business. The people that stay in business, the people that are successful are the ones that are constantly evaluating and honing and are, are making sure that no one is beating them for lack of effort, for complacency. Because if you're not moving forward, you are actually moving backwards because other people are moving forward. And there's going to be somebody else that's going to keep pushing and that's going to continue to innovate. This is true of Blockbuster and Apple and RIM and Netflix. That's where we are. Do you want to be Blockbuster and out of business? Or do you want to be Netflix? You want to be RIM out of business because you held on to your BlackBerry for way too long. I loved the keyboard on the BlackBerry. It was a great keyboard. I, I wouldn't, I, I wish some days that the iPhone had a keyboard like that. I've gotten used to it. I've gotten used to the, the digital keyboard instead of the physical keyboard. It's not quite as fast, but it, for all of the other features that it offers me, it's worth it. It's a minor sacrifice because I get a device that's really high quality. So think about that in the context of your business. Are you doing what you've always done and expecting it to work in the middle of a pandemic? So please keep that in mind. If, if it's working, great. But if it's not, do something else. If it's working, can it be improved on? Keep improving. Keep pushing forward. Don't let complacency win. Do everything you can to make sure that your business, you are non-complacent. Find ways to beat your competition through innovation and you will have the successful business that you want. You will be the Apple instead of the Rim. <laughs> you will be the Netflix instead of the Blockbuster. So my final thoughts today are this. Don't let the pandemic hurt you. Do what you've got to do to innovate and grow your business. Until next week, we'll talk to you later.